Hello and welcome to this new tutorial about how to use Ultra Game Template in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, in this tutorial, things are going to be not complicated, but a, a little bit tedious, okay? Because we're going to start implementing the progression system that UGT comes with it. So the first step, if you want to have a progression system, is stealing things. So we're going to steal things from Ultra Game Template, and we're going to go to Ultra Game Template, Maps, Progression Levels, and for example, Level 1. And there is a little blueprint here, that actually everywhere, and this one is called Checkpoint First Steps. And we're going to copy this entity, and we're going to put it in my own map. Okay, let's paste it. It should be here. Okay. And we need a, in, even another entity. Let's go to level one. Okay. And this one is at the end of the level. And this entity is called is called next level trigger. Not the button, but the next level next level trigger. Let's copy this one. And let's put it in the third person map. Okay, that's all we need. Uh for now. I'm going to reset the rotation because why not? And let me let me show you how this entity works. So this entity is the entity that I provide to you. You can use your own, and we'll learn later, later in the tutorial how you can implement your own methods to save the progression. But essentially, this is very easy. This is an entity that just saves the checkpoint name, okay, and the level name. Once you touch it, the, pro the progression, which is the percentage of progression of the player in the game, and then we just have a spawn direction to if you want a custom spawn direction for your player. Anyway, so what you should do is, as long as the player is progressing through the level, you should actually make the player touch these uh, blueprints over here. And for example, I'm just going to put one here, okay. And I'm just going to put another one here. And the next level trigger, we're going to set it up on top of here okay and we will have an example implementation of this system so first checkpoint as you can as you can see let me rotate it so you can see this and this is very important because now we are going to do some testing of the checkpoint so please make sure that in your default game data asset in ultra game template okay please make sure that you have development build okay and test checkpoints okay so let's start First of all, each checkpoint should have a name. So this checkpoint name should be, for example, third person first checkpoint, which is checkpoint, and progression, let's say three. This other checkpoint should be a progression eight, and third person underscore second checkpoint. This is super uh obvious names and finally we need in this level here okay this next level trigger this has to be set up to next level and the next level name it's also very important and we need to open our new level and as you remember in previous tutorials i have just made some uh, tests levels okay so this would be the second level let me open again my first level and then i'm going to F2 and copy the name of the second level and I'm just going to set it up here. Okay, so and this is the next level intro area name. This is important because this is going to be a fake chain point because this is not really a checkpoint but it's the uh, player spawn of the level. Uh, in Unreal it's totally called player start. Okay, so we it just to give it a name in the save game. So for example, third person, second uh, level, fake checkpoint you'll see what i mean and where this info actually starts okay and to make sure that this system is working uh, in the default game data asset i'm just going to override the shader stuff so force no shader compilation on pc and remember the slot system i'm going to use the full multiple save slot system but this should work with any other of the save systems of course if you choose the last one it won't save the game okay but anyway so just to get things clean i'm going to go to the save folder um save games okay there's nothing here that's fantastic and now we're going to uh, test the progression as if the player were playing in a normal packaged game so i'm going to go to find recent levels and i'm going to go to ugt main menu map i'm going to play 
and we're just going to play and we're going to start a new game this is business as usual okay and as you can see I just get spawning the map. This is like before. This is the input that we have done. Okay. And then we have first checkpoint. And look what happens. And it says they're not reached. Look at what happens when I touch this checkpoint. Then it says save. And a little save icon appears down on the right. Okay. So now I can close the game even. I don't need to navigate to the main menu. And if I go to play now, wow. So I, you know, I now have slot one, third person map, and TP underscore first checkpoint. Difficulty normal, zero minutes, zero hours, and three percent. Okay, uh, but I could even make a new slot, so I'm going to make a new slot. Okay, a new game, and I'm going to progress further. So I'm going to go here, here. I'm going to touch this one. It is, it is saying now save, and I'm going to ch touch this checkpoint. And now this checkpoint is safe. Let's go to the main menu, and if I click save. Look at that. Third person map, third person map, but this one is 8% completion and the best second checkpoint normal. Okay, if I select this one and I start playing from here, you guess it, now I'm going to get spawned in the checkpoint, not the start of the map, which is fantastic. And now let's see what happens if I touch the next level trigger, which, oh shit, I cannot go. Let me do a little bit of parkour. Ah! Okay, we got it. Fantastic. Now I'm going to touch the next level trigger. And this is going to send me to the next level through the loading screen. And once I'm in this level, remember in the loading screen I have totally disabled the, the, the tips. That's why you don't get no tips. But now I'm in the new level. And if I go to exit to main menu and click play, as you will see, this one is third person map 2 and the checkpoint name is the fake name that we gave it. So TP underscore second level fake checkpoint. Okay, so that's how the progression system works. And just uh, so you know, once your game is done and you, the player has reached the very end of your game, okay, you can use this entity, the next level trigger, for instead of saying go to level, next level, if you put here credits or main menu or launcher or whatever you want, you will send the player to the credits or main menu or whatever level that you have set up in the default game data asset, which is fantastic. And of course, if you do that, you don't need to put something here or here. Okay. So this is the progression system, but uh, let's go a little bit in more detail on how things work. But before that, maybe you want a progression system. Okay. Look, I have spawned here because uh, every time I play, I always from editor, I always spawn in the first slot and in the first slot I had progressed until here. Okay. That's why I, uh, I spawned here while testing the game. But what I, what I wanted to talk to you about is if I go to the main menu and click play, maybe this is too many info for you and you don't want all this info to be uh, shown in the save slot. So uh, what could you do? What you could do is you go to the default game data asset and you guessed it. Yes. If you go down the data asset and into the toggle, into the toggles, okay, UGT toggles, here you will find a bunch of toggles for configuring how the name of the save slot is. So, for example, I don't want to say show the, the time in the slot, okay. I don't want to show the name of the checkpoint, okay. I don't want to show the progression or I don't want to show even the name of the level. Okay. And as you can see now, if I play and go to the main menu, now I have absolutely nothing here, only the difficulty, which you can actually disable that too if you want, if you want. And I think difficulty, uh, disable difficulty setting. If I click that, I think it won't even show that exactly okay so maybe that's maybe too little information now but as you see you can disable everything you want so my advice would be to at least show the level name okay and show the progression that way the player knows how far in the game he has progressed and that's it now we go to the main menu we click play and now we, we only have the number and the level name that's it okay so this is fantastic news, but how is how are these methods implemented if you want to implement additional bars in your safe loads or something? So it's actually super easy. 
you go to the first part, uh, so the to the checkpoint blueprint, you click right button and edit checkpoint actor, okay? And here, uh, this class will be commented, I promise, once you download it, but I have not made the comments in this class yet. But here, we have the checkpoint overlap. This is a method to check if the completion of the player is bigger than the progression, then we don't save. But essentially, what you need is this. Every time you want to save, even if you want to save the progression with your own methods, you need to get the progression save slots, and this will return the save slot of the progression on that slot. So it will return a reference to a save class from UGT slot progression save. And as you can see in this save, we uh, just save all the variables necessary uh, to track the progression of the player. Aside from that, I always recommend to copy those variables in the game instance because there are some consoles, and I cannot enter into many details because NDAs, um, but there are some consoles that are a little slow reading save data. Okay, so perhaps when you read the data, you want to read the data from your game instance directly. That's why every variable that I have here, I actually copy it the same value of, uh, to the game instance, but that is totally optional if you want. And we'll also save the level named. Anyway, you get you, you get how it, things are going. You get the get progression save slot, and then you start doing things. You save and change the value of stuff, the completion, whatever. And when you're finishing setting up your variables, the only thing you need is you have to get the UGT game instance, and from here save progression settings. And in the save game object, just hook again get progression save slot. And you can decide if you want to show the save icon, yes or not. And that's really it. That's how you save uh, the variables. And if you want to make a new kind of variable to save, I don't know, the weather or, wh or whatever thing you want to save, this is how you would save that progression, okay? So yeah, that's actually it. Um, we're going to leave it here from this tutorial and see you in the next one.